time here. We're trying to figure out whether this is a phase or not, whether we're actually in love with this man. So yeah, let's talk about it. Let's talk about the show that gets 82 million household riveted and the star in it, Reggae John Page. I honestly think this man is gonna be so huge. He is already very huge. He's going places just as a human being and as an artist, he's so inspirational. So I just wanna share my perspective on how Reggae is not your average gorgeous Hollywood actor and why he is becoming everything our little hearts desire. So to start, let's rewind to where everything started, Bridgerton. My friend and I were having brunch and we were like, why don't we try an episode of Bridgerton? We were not really expecting anything but a Regency drama that's just pretty English people drinking high tea and attending glamorous balls in their very gorgeous clothes, which is kind of an accurate portrayal of Bridgerton. It was glamour, it was beautiful, um, but it's also much more than that. And I had no idea what's coming my way. Enter the Duke, Simon Bassett, and everything changed. Not only because Reggae John Page is incredible, incredibly hot, and I mean incredibly hot, but also because he is definitely not what the viewer was expecting a Duke would look like. This is another topic that we'll dive deeper into later. So yeah, I remember being very intrigued. I remember asking my friend, oh, so is this like a colorblind Regency drama? Or is it kind of like a colorblind cast, like Hamilton the musical? There's different type of colorblindness, and I just want to know what's the intention behind this. But later, with Daphne and the Duke looking like a million bucks all the time, I was soon distracted. And here we are at the end of episode. Episode one. Soundtrack of Bridgerton is just like A plus. It is so good. I think what really got me going in this scene is the music behind this whole thing. It really just like pushed the emotion and the tension to the pinnacle. We can pretend to form an attachment. Of course, of course, two of the most attractive people of the time will be like. You know what, we don't really like each other that much and we never fell in love, so why don't we form a pact? Bam! Guess what? They fell in love. Me and my friend were like, we saw this coming. We don't need to keep watching and then... Episode two, let's go. If you can't tell by now, I have zero immunity to this particular vibe. So I devoured the eight episode and it was just life-changing, soul awakening. And here I want to mention my favorite scene. To meet a beautiful woman is one thing, but to meet your best friend and the most beautiful of women is something entirely apart. I did not want Miss Bridgerton to only be my friend. I wanted her to be my wife. I want her to be my wife. And reggae delivers that monologue so beautifully, so it just really pinned me down. Like, not literally pinned me down. Makes my heart melt. So naturally, after finishing the show, I started cyber-stalking reggae. Usually when I feel emotionally invested into a character or a show, I would just look into um, the cast interviewed and just hear about their take on their character, the production, and just their creative process. I guess we all do this, right? Because the actor was at the end of the day a vessel of the character that we like, and we kind of want to know how much of the actor was actually shined through through the character. And it's this part of the journey where reggae really shined and stood out to me because I'm obsessed with how he answers his question with overwhelming charisma. Reggae is so good at interview and he gets me even more excited about the show after I watched it. Not only does he market the show well, he also always talk about his admiration and appreciation for his team. And he even flirts with the interviewer in such a charming, subtle and classy way. Classic reggae, he's going, he's going in with the charm. But in all seriousness, and I'm pretty sure many people who watch Reggae's interview can relate, it is not hard to tell that he is a very genuine, witty, and very intellectual person. So yeah, we talked about his charming charisma, now we're going to talk about his passion. Reggae is very passionate and intentional about his work. He also mentioned in the interview that he view acting as a service. And I think that you will almost always stay on track if you process all of your actions through the idea of service. Who am I serving at this moment? How am I serving them? How can I serve them better? Even in something as indulgent as playing make believe. He makes me realize that once in a while it is important to kind of slow down and remind ourselves about what we truly value. What impact are we making on other people's life doing what we do? And I think this metric is actually very important to not only the success of your career, but also your own happiness and sense of fulfillment. Dedicating your career to serving others is something that's really inspirational to me. And I think that's 
part of the reason why he is so special and successful. Like for example, by playing Simon in Bridgerton, Reggae brings me pure joy with his body of a Greek god. Man, my mom's gonna kill me when she sees this. But outside of the show, he is also very dedicated in bringing up a lot of profound, thought-provoking social implication that goes beyond the story itself. He talks about the importance of having racial representation in period drama and to include a diverse variety of black narrative into the movie and TV industry. He emphasized the industry need to stop spotlighting only black trauma, but also begin to portray black joy. Everyone has a right to be able to see themselves in the stories we tell. Um, because that in turn creates um, your idea of yourself. You know, there's a big difference between if you get dressed in the morning with a mirror and if you don't. But I think we also do that every day in real life with um, the culture that we see on our screens. If we see ourselves accurately, then we can build ourselves accurately. And it just really spoke to me and made me like introspect a lot about my own media consumption, how they shaped my worldview, my value system, and also my own cultural identity growing up. I feel like I'm not even half as eloquent as reggae in the interview, so I will leave the link to some of his interview down in the description box if you're interested in checking them out. Last but not least, I want to talk about how talented he is not only as an actor but also as a artist in general. He is the epitome of a versatile virtuoso. I am not kidding. As we mentioned before, I began cyber stalking reggae after I finished the show. I was down in a rabbit hole. I watched a bunch of his interviews on YouTube. I was reading a lot of articles about him. I also found his Tumblr and I don't even have a Tumblr account wild. I found out that he actually is a music lover. He plays guitar and he's in the band with his little brother and he even made a dance film last year called Don't Wait and he sings in it and it's his own original songs which I found is fascinating. The moment his voice hit my eardrum, my heart exploded. He was such a good singer. Sweet, sweet sunshine. On top of his musical talent, Reggae is also a writer. Like, what can't you do, man? I saw one of his poems that he wrote a few years back about the story of his name and also the story of his mother. Just a little bit of context, Reggae's mother is from Zimbabwe and Reggae also spent most of his childhood in Zimbabwe before he moved back to London. It was a really powerful read and somehow it kind of reminded me of Trevor Noah's writing. They both share this emotional experience growing up as a mixed race child in a racially homogenous environment. I definitely don't have a similar experience to that, but I did resonate with the aspect of this poem when Reggae was talking about how people keep questioning his name and his mother's story of having to give up her own name and pick a new one or to go to school when she was a kid. As someone who adopted an English name since college, I just kind of put my Chinese name on the shelf. It hit hard. That's just something that really got me thinking. Yeah, he's just very well-rounded, holistic, talented. And as someone who also loves exploring a variety of creative outlets, I see similarity between the two of us. So that's all the rambling I have about Reggae Jean Page. I hope you learned something about him. I hope this is fun to watch. Please hit the like button if you are also burning for him. I burn for you. And please subscribe if you don't want to miss out on my future videos where I probably will geek out on movie, things I like, and also other magical cultural phenomena like Reggae Jean Page. See you in the next one. Bye. I can't believe I actually did this. I really hope that Reggae don't see this video and I hope he doesn't find me creepy if he sees this. <laughs>